All right, I'm going to try to show you guys a quick example of how to use SAM. So let me go ahead and load it up. So I load up System Advisor model here. So notice I've got that 2017 version. So once I have this guy opened up, I'm going to start a new project. And then I've got a whole bunch of different things that this guy can do. All right, we don't need to do all these different types of things. We're going to do this photovoltaic detailed. And then we're going to do commercial distributed, right? Since we're talking about a commercial system. Click on that. And it opens this guy up. All right, so I see over here I got a bunch of different things that I can kind of choose. All right, so I'm going to start out first with setting up my location. So my example, I said it was going to be Philadelphia. So what I'm going to do is go to here. I can select my weather file. So it defaults every time to, to Arizona. I'm just going to go down here and type Philadelphia. All right, now I want to do it for the airport. So I do Philadelphia International Airport, and it's this TMY3. What that means is typical meteorological year. So somehow they've figured out what a typical weather profile looks like in Philadelphia. So, and again, that's true for everywhere else. When you guys do it, you'll do it for Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Okay, so I pick that. Now I go to my module. All right, so this is where I pick my panel. Now, so the example that I have in the notes, I use the Solar World 290 mono. So I do solar world. So I type in the manufacturer. All right. So now I see solar world panels appearing. All right. Now I specifically have the solar world. I think it's actually the 295 mono right, that I chose. Okay. So I choose that panel. These are the characteristics that are there in the slide, right? So you guys can see that later. So I've got the panel I want. Now I go to choosing my inverter, okay? So I'm gonna bring this guy over here for a second. The inverter that I selected was this PVI-60TL. And so what I'm gonna do is it was from Selectria. So I type in Selectria. Now, one thing about the inverter, this SAM has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, and so it's a little bit tricky to find the one we want. So now that I've got it narrowed down to Selectria, I'm going to start scrolling through here and look for the PVI-60TL. And there's the 36TL. So there's a whole bunch of different things here. And essentially, these are all different models, all probably for very similar devices. There it is, okay, the PVI-60TL. So this is the one that I'm looking for. There's, there's other ones in here uh, which, which may very well be similar, but what I know is correct is this guy, the PVI-60TL. All right, so I've got the one that I want. All of the inverters that I tell you guys to choose from in the assignment are all there, so you'll be, you'll be good to go. All right, so down here I can see information about the efficiency. So this guy's got a CEC efficiency of 98%. That's pretty high. All right, now I go to my system design, okay? So what I do specifically is I say specify my modules and inverters, okay? So based on the design that I had, I said I had 22 panels in a string. And I also said what I had was four strings on one MPP tracker and three trackers on the PVI-60TL. So that basically means 12 strings per inverter. And then what I said is I had six inverters, so that's uh, six times 12, so that's 72 total strings in parallel across six inverters. So that's a little bit tricky. This thing here, you're defining the entire array. So you're saying you got 22 panels in, in a, or 22 modules in a string. I have 72 strings in parallel across six inverters. So there's 12 strings per inverter, but the, what you're telling it is that you have 72 total across the six inverters. Sometimes it's a little bit confusing, okay? Now, notice when I changed everything, at some point here, this, this actual AC-DC ratio, all the numbers down here changed. 
1.3 was what we calculated in the assignment, so this, this seems about correct. So let's look at what we've got. So for those 72 strings, it says I got 470 kilowatts DC, 360 kilowatts AC. The 360 kilowatts AC, I can see 6 times 60, or sorry, yeah, 6 times 60 gets me to 360. And if I counted up the nameplate power, that 295 watts across all the panels, I'd have 470 kilowatts. Now, down here, I see this guy defaults to a 30 degree tilt, which is pretty close to the latitude. I'm going to change that to zero because I said I wanted my modules to be flat. Now, there's a lot of things you can do within SAM. I can start talking about self-shading of panels and things like that. I can also talk about losses. Now, we didn't really talk about losses, but that gets into, into play with things like how much uh, power I lose in, in the wiring. So for instance, there's current flowing through the wires and there's resistance in the wires. So there's going to be power loss. So I can model some of those things. All right, We're just going to go with the defaults. We're not going to play with that. And we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click simulate. It runs. And now I get a bunch of data that I can look at from this thing. So here's my monthly KWH. So what I can see with this guy is I get 587 kilowatt hours out of it. All right. Just out of curiosity, if I go back, well, no, I, it's a little tricky to do that here. So 587 kilowatt hours out of this thing in a year. All right. And I can look at a couple of things. If I go to the time series and I want to see some different things. So the irradiance. So POA means plane of array. So that means right on the panels themselves, uh, which I guess it can't show me. It needs more information to do that. This is global horizontal irradiance. So what this is doing is just telling me <clears throat> what the irradiance looks like as I go through the year. So you can see sort of peak values around 1,000 are what I get sort of in the middle of the summer. So that's just telling me about the weather. Now I can get some, some more specific information here. I can see what the open circuit voltage looks like over time. Like we said, it looks like the open circuit voltage gets pretty close to, to 1,000, gets up to sort of where we expected it to go in the coldest parts of the year, and then kind of goes down in the warmer parts of the year. Uh, let's see. The other things we might want to see, so the DC power from the array, so how many kilowatts I actually get out of this thing. The other thing I'm going to look at real quick, and if I want to look at it separately, I'm going to look at this clipping loss. Okay, So this right here, this is how much power we're losing due to the clipping. So there's sometimes when it's really sunny, right, when we're, because of that 1.3 DC to AC ratio, we're losing some power, but you can see that it's not actually that much. So you can kind of see from this why sizing the system with that DC to AC ratio makes sense because we're always operating at a higher efficiency and kind of getting more energy out of the result, right? So it's really easy to use this guy. Um, I can easily take these guys. If I just right click on it, copy data to clipboard, send data to Excel. I can basically uh, copy this as a, as a bitmap. Then I can just paste into another document. So it's, and I can do the same thing with, with these guys. I can copy the table or copy it as a comma-separated variable file. So it's pretty easy to use.